So the guys at ELAC finally updated their Unify series. Their UB5 was previously very popular, one of my favorite speakers of all time. Now they have the 2.0, the UB52. Let's see how it compares. So if you're looking at these speakers, you might be thinking to yourself that you're gonna need an app with it, and that leads us to our show sponsor, Marantz. If you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of Marantz. I bought my first Marantz over 20 years ago, the 2220B. When I brought it home, it felt like nothing I've ever owned. The look, the feel of the knobs, the glow of the lights, and of course, the sound. Marantz is carrying on with that tradition with their new Model 30 amplifier. The attention to detail is unmistakable. The symmetry in the industrial design, the use of metal, the fact that they paid attention to the weight of the dials, the glow of the light is specific to this series. They promise a sound that is everything you expect from a Marantz product. Heritage is not about holding on to old ways. It's about upholding values. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the pros, the things I like about it. I'm going to have my my buddy come over and talk about some of the cons, and then we'll have the professor come and talk about some of the more technical stuff. So first thing I noticed in the unboxing is that it felt about the same weight as a previous version. I did the knuckle wrap because they claim that they have changed the enclosure to make it more rigid. And I did notice that in that test, it did sound more solid. Original one. 2.0. Higher pitch, higher pitch on the side. New one. Okay. In addition, they have an all new crossover, an all new woofer, an all new mid range tweeter, terminal. I mean, pretty much everything on this thing is new. Even the vinyl wrap, there's nothing that they really brought over from the previous version that I can see with my eyes. Now definitely one of the traits of the old UB5 was that it had very good bass output for its size. It was a three-way concentric design, which gave it some advantages. It had to have a more beefy crossover in order to have a three-way design like that. And the mid-range and the tweeter were concentric, which gave you very good off-axis response vertically, horizontally, any which way. And they were time-aligned, which means that those mid-range uh, frequencies and the high frequencies reach your ears at the same times and that makes a huge difference in how you perceive the sound. So one of the complaints that I've heard from people is they felt like the original UV5s were a bit dark, the treble was rolled off significantly on those, and so maybe you didn't get some of that detail and resolving power as some other speakers, which some people like. And with this series, I can tell you that they definitely changed that. So Andrew Jones over there was listening, Andrew Jones, the designer of these speakers, and he's very well regarded, very popular in the audio community, as you may already know. And for good reason, he knows what he's doing, and it's cool to hear that he's listening, you know? So he listened to some of that feedback, and in this model, as we'll look at later, he did lift up that treble response. It's more linear, it's flatter, and so it blends with the mid-range and the bass a little bit better than the previous model. So what you get is a speaker that will measure more accurately, and also it'll sound better near field as well as far field. So I've tried it both ways, and I definitely could tell a difference, especially when you get close, that it just sounds more like the original track. Previously, I've done an audio demo where I compared it to the UB5, and so I'll link to that in the description. You can take a listen, and you can tell for yourself that it does sound more like the original track than the previous UB5s. Something that I wasn't expecting is that additional treble response also gives you a better perceived soundstage. So to me, it sounded wider, and I could I could pinpoint where things were so the imaging was better. It still has a very solid center image, which is good. The other thing that's obvious is with the increase in treble response, it's better for TV and movie watching. So you'll get clearer vocals and the intelligibility is just there. So a lot of times I found it kind of hard to hear certain voices with the previous UB5s unless I let my AVR kind of bump that up for itself, which I don't do currently. So another big change on this is that they went with a front ported design as opposed to rear ported, kind of like what they did when they moved from the original ELAC debut to the debut 2.0. So you can imagine that the port being in the front is, you know, gives you about the same width as the speaker. So the previous speaker, if it's up against the wall, this new one's already 
you know, just that much further away. So that's helpful if you can't put them, you know, right in the center of the room or wherever the optimal place is in your room. And so I found that they were more forgiving to placement compared to the rear ported UB5s. I also got the chance to check out their UC52, their new center channel speaker. And this center channel is a bit wider longer because it's front ported as well. I'm happy to say that it inherits the same characteristics as the bookshelf speakers themselves. So I'll be honest, at first, I just really wasn't used to that increased treble response. You know, I was expecting the same sound signature that I was kind of used to from old Andrew Jones speakers. So I've had Pioneer BS22 LRs and the FS52, some of my favorite speakers of all time in that price category and you know, those also had that darker, warmer sound signature that I like because they were so forgiving, uh, especially in certain rooms. Like, you know, if you have a reflective room that can work to our, towards your advantage. And so this having a different sound signature, I wasn't used to it. I wasn't expecting it. I guess I should have because it's similar to the frequency response of the debut reference series. And so, yeah, at first, I don't know. I didn't know if I liked it or not. But as I've been listening more and more, I don't know if it's breaking, you know, I'm not a real believer in that, but maybe it can happen um, or I'm just getting used to it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I really haven't done anything else, but they sound they sound better to me than they initially did. So those are all the things I like about the Unify 2.0. I'm going to bring in my friend and he has a slightly different opinion. And so let's talk about it. What's all this I hear about this Andrew Jones guy? Everybody kissing his butt. Dude could probably make some Bluetooth speakers and everybody will think that they're awesome. They do make a wireless speaker. They will? Whatever. Look, let me tell you something about these speakers, okay? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're you know, I had the UB5s. I had, I, I bought into it. You know, I watched some, some old CNET videos from old like CES 2001, I don't know. It was a while back, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I, look, I'll tell you straight up. I like those speakers. I like those speakers. You know, Andrew Jones, you know, he got the British accent. He got me. It sounds elitist to say I'm you know, what I like. Everyone seems to like it. Just that's the way it's turned out. He got me the first time, you know, but I don't know if he's going to get me again. You know, I hear I heard the new ones and uh, yeah, what, what they have more trouble, you know? Well, so what? So what? So what? I'm supposed to spend another, you know, 600 bucks because they have more trouble. I could just turn I could turn up the knob a little bit. And you know, I'll tell you right now, the first time I heard that treble, it wasn't the smoothest ones that I've ever heard. You know, it sounded a little I felt like they could be a little bit harsh, harsh to these ears. You know what I'm saying? Fresh hater Jay's ears. But um, you know, they're not at the same time, they're brighter, but I don't know that they have more detail than some of the other speakers. You know, I heard some high-end speakers that have that you know that finesse that silkiness and they give you all kinds of details maybe the detail might not even be there but who cares you know what i mean it'll resolve it right probably resolve like 50 kilohertz something like that you know there's something i just don't like about the tweeter you know maybe it's kind of like that lower 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 mid-range upper mid-range lower lower highs that i feel like it's like something hard about it right so I don't know, something maybe with a crossover, maybe he's pushing it too hard. I don't know. What do I look like? I'm no speaker designer. Gritty. So, sounded gritty to me. Some, something like that. I know Andrew Jones might be a fan of Fresh Hater J. And I would say that I hope that in the future, maybe they're going to do a higher end version, something like that. I hope they might go crazy and do some kind of like aluminum dome, metal dome, uh, tweeter in that concentric design. I like concentric. concentric. Well, def is that how you say concentric? I like that. But um, yeah, I don't know if I like the soft dome in there. You know, or they're using some cheap soft dome. I don't know. Whatever. But, you know, maybe use a beryllium one. Go crazy. Oh, you've already done that? Andrew Jones? Okay, whatever. Let me just say this is that, you know, the base extension that UB5, if you had it near a wall, you know, you get a little bit of room gain if you need help with that. And so with these, I can't get them close enough. Yeah, the new ones are maybe a little bit punchy. I don't know, whatever. Maybe they're a little more accurate, but if you want extra extension, maybe the older ones could do that for you. Can we talk about this grill? Can we talk about this grill? 
I'm pretty sure I've uh, checked out some speakers that are like maybe two, three, three hundred dollars that had a magnetic grill. How much are magnets nowadays? Are magnets expensive? I, I don't know. I don't know what's so expensive about magnets, but these don't, these are like what, 600 bucks? They don't have magnetic grills. What's going on? And in addition, let's take a look at those grills in detail. You thought, you, you thought I wouldn't notice. You thought Fresh Hater J would not notice, but I noticed. The logo on this new grill doesn't look as good as this old, look at this old badge right here. Isn't that nice, right? And another thing is if you take off the grill, you don't know what speaker it is, right? You don't know what brand speaker this is if you take off the grill. At least the old one had two badges. So don't think I didn't notice. In addition, how about, how about the terminal in the back? I love that terminal on the back of the UB5s. Those were so awesome. You could tell they spent money on that thing. And the new ones, they they straight took those from like the, the debut series, right? You know what I mean? So don't look at the back on there. That's what they're basically saying. Here's the front port. Don't look at the back. There's no need to look back there. What else? What else? So another thing is the vinyl wrap. Another thing, I think they might've gotten mixed up with the debut series, but I think it's pretty much the same vinyl wrap. It's not the same as the, the original Unify, which is good because those things kind of peeled off, but whatever, you know, at least the cones aren't green on this one, ha. Huh? Another thing is I know that they said that they upgraded the bracing on these. And yeah, you know, when you do the knock test, you know, knuckle wrap, you can hear that it, it, it's, it sounds like a bowling ball. Yeah, but um, you know, it doesn't feel any heavier. And to me, heavy equals quality, right? People were complaining before that the, the, the four ohms was too hard for their little cheap amplifiers to drive and they had to get a decent amplifier to drive those original Unify series. But Andrew Jones, again, you know, he caved, he caved. He got the six ohm, he got the six ohm speakers going on this time. And so, yeah, you know, you, you're, you're old school, uh, you know, Marantz amplifier could push them. I did some measurements of my own. You know, I know how to, I know how, I have a measurement, you know, and I noticed that the, the new ones are about a decibel and a half quieter than the previous ones. So yeah, they might be easier to drive, but I also got to turn them up louder. So kind of balance itself out, doesn't it? So when it comes down to it, the thing about the UB5s that I liked is that, you know, with that rolled off treble response, it, it was like, it was urging me like, come on, I dare you to turn me up. I know you can't, you can't hear the voices that well on the TV show. So I dare you to turn it up. And so it keep begging me, come on, come on, turn, turn it up, turn it up more power. I can handle it. And so I like that about it. You know, that's like me. I don't know. Let's see what the professor has to say. Quite the character, that guy. Last time we did some binaural audio recordings and I did a blind test as well as a visual test where you could actually see both speakers. So in both cases, listeners seem to like the 2.0 compared to the previous UB5s. Based on the comments, it was statistically significant. My conclusion is that the UB5s were interacting with the room in ways that the new UB52s were not. Let's take a quick look at the frequency response. And a few things that you will notice is that these sound much better with the grill off. Andrew Jones has stated before that he does design these with the grill off. And so if you can try to listen to them that way. Here is a measurement that I took of the new Unify 2.0 UB52s. And uh, so I did one very close and then another one a little bit further away so you can see that it is a little bit lower and I get a little bit more of the room interaction. So uh, there's the UB52. We'll take a look at this one for right now. And the first thing to notice is that, yeah, it's pretty flat along here. I'll show you real quick what happens when you put the grill on though. So with the grill, it starts doing some pretty funky stuff over here. And so definitely I would recommend not using that grill. Now let's compare it to the UB5. This is what you guys all wanna see. And so take a look at that there. So you can see that the bass response, bass, lower mids, mids, are very, very similar, right? Um, it kind of leads me to believe that maybe the, the driver is very similar to the old driver, although the face looks different. And also what, what you'll notice is right here in the red, this is the Unify 2.0, that from, what is this, 110, 60 hertz, about 110, it does have significantly more bass output. After that, the U, old UB5s actually have more bass extension, so they extend out further. So what's more usable? Probably the new one, 
right? So you can hear that in the sound demos also that people were saying that it did have more bass and it's probably because the bass was within this region. The other significant thing to note is look at how much difference there is in the top end response. The green being the old unifies. And so that's about what, maybe three or four decibel difference in most cases. Yeah, so in this particular spot, the new one is 79.4 dB, whereas the old one is 75.2. So a significant amount of difference over, let's say, three and a half kilohertz. It definitely has more top end response. All right, so just for fun, I pulled up the measurements for the debut reference. And so let's take a look at that real quick. And you'll see that they're very similar in response, uh, specifically the top end response. So let's take a look at what the tweeter is doing here. And that is so spot on that it makes me wonder if it's actually the same tweeter, right? So there are some differences here that you'll see. Um, yeah, with the debut reference, maybe not extending out as far, right? But having a little bit more of a bump here. So yeah, this is very interesting. Is it the same tweeter? I'll have to ask. Another quick test that I did was I did the knuckle wrap on the cabinets to kind of see what they sounded like. Not a perfectly scientific test whatsoever, but here's the UB52 and I try to, to knock on them about the same uh, amount. And so that's that one. And then when I did the UB5, significantly louder and a slightly different response. And you can hear that in the unboxing that I did. I did the knuckle wrap on both of them and you can kind of hear a difference. The last thing to note is when I did the measurements of the UC52, the center channel, it did have a very similar response. And you can see that the top end specifically is very well matched. And so compared to the UC5 for those asking if they should or if they can use the old with the new and mix and match, I would say no, because they do sound different, especially here on the top end. All right, so one thing I should also note is the minus three dB point. And so this was calibrated for about 78.8 decibels uh, dBC. So three decibels down from that would be 75.8. So let's take a look there and see where we're at. 75.8, somewhere around here. So about 46 hertz and i think that's about what they say it is as well all right so i'm here on their website let's take a quick look and they claim 46 hertz what did i find 46 <laughs> that's crazy all right well there you go aaron's audio corner he's doing some pretty awesome videos with a very advanced clipple and so here's what he does is he shows the plus and minus 3 db point uh using a colored part of the graph and that's very helpful so you can see here Anything within the blue is plus or minus three dB. And you can tell that pretty much all of this is within that, except for this, and this could most likely is my room. So uh, yeah, there you go. Very good. So you can see there some of the changes that he made to the frequency response on the new Unify 2.0s. Now let's take a look and see how these compare to other speakers on the speaker leaderboard. And we have the UB52s. And so they fit in a few categories, first being best bookshelf, and so here we have the Denton 85th anniversary, the Navis ARB51s, Klipsch the Fives, Elec debut reference. Hmm. So I put the Fives up pretty high because they are powered and I feel like they offer a good value because of that. I would say that these UB52s fall maybe right here above the debut reference. So these are these two are competing very closely. And so it's interesting to see that Elec is, you know, they have three speakers within the top five. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, they have the ARB51s, the UB52, and the debut reference. So I don't think they're getting lucky. They know exactly what they're doing over there. Now, as far as best for desktop, I would say that these are not made for the desktop. So I'm going to have to place them down here. They're not powered. They're not small. But I would say they're not meant for that, right? They're not meant for that. So I would place them somewhere, you know, maybe next to these. You know, nobody's really buying these specifically for desktop use, but I would say, yeah, somewhere around there. I don't know, over here. I don't think they'll feel bad about that. Now, as far as where do they place for the price, they're gonna be under the thousand dollar category. So I'm gonna have to place them here and see where they go. Den 85th, UB52s, Clips of the Fives, debut reference. So the thing I like about the Den 85th, real wood veneer, and they had a sound signature with a six and a half inch driver that I really liked. 
and overall build quality was better and they had just this nice sweet sound to them i really like the way that those sounded very i would call them seductive right now compared to some of these other ones clips of the fives also they just have so much technology built into them, into them that i think they uh you know i think they offer a good value because of that so again i would say here neck and neck with a debut reference above the rp 600 m's because the ub 52s are technically flatter um above all these and so yes above the original ub 5s as well because you know they're they are better the problem is the ub 5s were under 500 dollars at 499 and sometimes they go on sale for even less than that so it's tough it's tough to compete with this now let's take a look over here the last thing that we're going to do is place it the last thing we're going to do is place it here in the category of best overall sound regardless of price so where does it place i would say that it has to be under the arb 51 because those did sound excellent very similar in sound but uh the the navis just edges them out slightly so i'm going to place them right here between so you have the den 85th elac navis ub52 debut reference and then q acoustics and so on and down here is the ub5 so they do win out good job elac team so i want to quickly speak about the center channel i know a lot of folks want to know the difference between the 2.0 and the previous ub5s and whether they can mix and match center channels so if you want to have the correct timbral balance you're going to want to have the same left center and right channel from the same series so add to that the difference in nominal impedance which means that your amplifier will have to compensate for that difference which can also affect the channel balance from left center and right speaker that's it okay all right so we had a bit of fun there and um yeah i guess i would say the original question was are these worth it for a hundred dollars more than the original ub5s if you have the current UB5s and you like the way they sound, I would say you can stick with the UB5s. If you have a way to kind of increase the treble on your AVR, that may help to compensate mm, a little bit, right? These new speakers are technically better, right? They're more accurate. Um, they are more expensive. I don't know that the, the quality on them is worth $100, what you get is a different sound signature. And if the sound signature that you're particularly looking for brighter, then you may want to go with the new version. If you don't have any speakers and you have to choose, it's a little bit tough because the best competitor to ELAC is actually ELAC themselves because the previous UB5s were on sale, huge discount. And so that's tough. Also, they have the debut reference series that are the same price range, but in my opinion, better build quality, better look. It has a front slotted port, just has a cool look to it, and I believe magnetic grills. And so that's tough competition. And what I would say is you would prefer these if you care a lot about the concentric design. If you feel like a three-way concentric has advantages which they do yes they have better off axis horizontal vertical response than a two-way design and you'll also get less modulation from that woofer because it it's dedicated it doesn't have to do mid-range duty it can just be a woofer and play bass and so you do have advantages that's a decision for you to make hopefully i've given you enough information about the pros the cons the differences for you to make a good decision for yourself overall i would say that i would gladly replace my previous ub5s that i've had for a very long time with the new versions because i'm using them for home theater and i do appreciate the better vocal intelligibility and just overall more accurate clearer highs so that's it if you like the video make sure to like subscribe ring the bell to be notified when i upload new videos and thank you to my patreon supporters thank you for supporting me allowing me to do what i love to do here on youtube if you're not already a patron patreon.com forward slash joe and tell so i have content there that you don't see on youtube i will start selling some of the extra stuff that i have here at a discounted rate and so check it out patreon.com forward slash joe and tell anyway that's it take care bye bye for my professional professional uh measurements uh you know probably better measurements than andrew jones <laughs>
<laughs> uh, okay. Mm-hmm.